Okay, I just wanna make sure. All right, so um, welcome. We are uh, looking right here at assignment one and um, the focus of this particular exercise is to um, really focus on everything up through parts one and two. And then um, next time, uh, next Saturday, we're going to have a separate uh, exercise that'll work on bringing it all together with everything you need for part three. Um, I think the first thing I wanna do here is just take a look at these um, instructions. So you guys have already, you know, looked at all of this and read it through. Um, you've been working on part one minimum viable quiz, um, just making sure you can successfully get um, input from the user for one of the quiz questions and uh, check to see if that question um, is right by comparing it against the uh, correct answer that's stored and then um, providing some sort of feedback to them. And if you can do that for just one question, then you can move on and you can do it for several. But that involves arrays, which is something that is very, very new to you. So we'll be getting into that. Um, the only thing we won't be doing is um, using iteration with loops. Um, that'll be next week. Um, the exercise will really cover that well. So um, let's look at part two and specifically, um, you know, the instructions here, they want you to redefine the question and answer variables that you already wrote to be arrays that contain all of the questions and all of the answers. And then you're going to, um, you know, you'll still be asking for their name, but then as you ask for their uh, answers to the questions, you're just, you're gonna use bracket notation on those arrays to get to those. And, um, and then you'll continue, you know, as you were before by comparing their response to the correct entry, but you're getting that from another array, right? And then you provide basic feedback with a template literal. And a lot of you, I as I was working with students um, on the first part, noticed that a lot of people are already using a template literal, and that's great because it's, in my humble opinion, the best way to go. Um, generally speaking, it's just so easy to format uh, your strings just like regular sentences without having to concatenate, you know, bits and pieces together. Um, I really like the format of it, so um, it's good practice. So we'll definitely be doing that. Um, and I think with that, I can go ahead and I can't get to my, there we go. Um, go ahead and get over to this REPL. So I took a version of this uh, favorite things exercise and created it just for this. Um, so we can kind of work through all of it. Um, it's got the, the usual little header there. So we, if we come down here, the very first thing we want to focus on is um, importing the read line seek library. So who can tell me what the correct uh, way to do that is? Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, go for it. C O N S T, so constant mm -hmm. input. Mm -hmm. Equal require a read line sync. Yep. If I can type it properly. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. And uh, who can tell me what the thought process is be um, behind making that uh, using const instead of let? Do you guys remember the difference of that? I know they talked about it kind of at the very beginning. Is it like so it can't be, so it can't be changed? Yeah, it's it's so you can't accidentally overwrite and um, use the same variable name input for something else. That way, it'll always be available as your way of, of getting um, input from the user. That's exactly right. <clears throat> yeah, every once in a while, you're going to have things that it's actually better to use const than it is to use let. So perfect. Okay, so now we have this input and um, we will be able to use it. So. Let's start with a couple of um, questions. So we want to ask our user what their favorite ice cream, ice cream flavor is. Um, so let's just start with that input. What's what's the method of input that we use to to do that? Input dot question. Question. Perfect. Yeah. And then we just you know write the question in there. I'm going to use regular quotes for now. We'll get to input literals in a minute. Um, so let's just say, uh, you know, hi, what is your favorite, oops, ice cream flavor? And I'm gonna put a little space there 
on that one so that uh, the answer doesn't butt up right against it in the console. We'll see how that goes in a second. Um, and then we'll do the same thing here, input dot question. I, I got to get my fingers to cooperate, y'all. <laughs> what is your favorite color? OK, um, so if we run, oh, there we go. If we run this, we have a problem because I obviously did something. OK, line 35. <laughs> oh, somehow I ended up with two semicolons. I told you my fingers are tripping up. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so now we're gonna play the part of the user. Somebody give me a favorite ice cream flavor. Chocolate. I'm with you, chocolate all the way. Okay, and somebody give me a favorite color. Blue. Blue, it's, it's a common one, mine as well. Okay, well, toss up with green, but yes, okay. So we just successfully, you know, did this. We asked the user and they were able to, you know, put answers in. But what happened to their answers, right? Um, all we did was just start with input that question and we were able to print the question and get the input, but it where did it go? It didn't it didn't go anywhere, right? So if we if we're going to get responses because input.question is very similar to console.log it's just they, they both print things to the console. The difference is input.question lets the user give you something and then sends that value back to the program. So um, in order for you to use it, you have to have a variable to store it in. So the general format is that answer equals input.question with the question, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, yeah, because every once in a while, you might be able to just kind of throw this into something else to do something with the value that comes back. But most likely you're gonna actually be storing it in a variable because you, especially if you know for sure there's a possibility you'll need to use it more than once, then you absolutely wanna make sure you have it in a variable. Um, and that is definitely gonna be the case for um, this exercise and for your assignment two, which is the Scrabble score exercise. You're gonna be dealing with a lot of that there too. Okay, so let's do the next example. Um, We'll get a recommendation for local food. We're gonna use the escape character to put some line breaks in and make the output a little bit more reader, uh, readable because this kind of all runs together a little bit visually, right? And I know that it's not all that common for people to use the console to like, you know, actually do things these days. <laughs> this is more for us behind the scenes, but you still wanna be thinking now, even though you're not close to actually, you know, coding a web page yet, you wanna be thinking about um, how easy it is for the research reader to, excuse me, for the user to read and to use. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna mess with that a little bit. So somebody give me, um, a, oh, we need, to, we need a variable for our favorite restaurant. Somebody give me a variable name that's descriptive. Favorite restaurant Hello? or favorite restaurant. Yeah, I like that, okay. Fave restaurant, and then this is where we now use the input that question, and then um, we'll say, uh, "What is your favorite?" Okay, this escape character thing um, backslash n is a really nice one to use because when you're working in the console, because it just automatically means if you use it inside here, it means that um, it's going to push the answer down to the next line so that the user won't, won't actually answer on this line. And then you don't have to remember to have that little space there. It's a little bit cleaner. Um, so we'll, let's, let's run, oh, you know what, stop. I'm gonna, so that we don't have to keep asking these two over and over again, because they don't do anything for us, I'm gonna comment them out. All right, now we should be able to go straight to this one. What is your favorite? Yeah, so see how it went down to the next line? Uh, somebody give me a favorite restaurant. Cheesecake factory. I don't know. Amen. Avocado egg rolls, y'all. Those are the things that are the best. Or, yeah. I um, used to work there. <laughs> yeah. So did I many moons ago. <laughs> um, good. Okay. And so, like right now, if I was to, um, you know, console log that just to make sure I stored the value right, let's just test that out. Did I store the value? And of course we'll have to run it again, but that's okay. So cheesecake factory. All right. 
And look at that, it came back. So we correctly stored um, the, the user's input into that variable and now we can use it as many times as we want. Um, okay, now let's do the next one. We're gonna ask for the favorite food, same thing. Uh, we can go with uh, favorite food, that'll work. And what is your favorite thing to order from? And we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually like work ahead a little bit here. We're going to change this um, to template literal by using back ticks instead of quotes. And um, I think what we'll do then is be able to actually put the restaurant name in here. Okay, so what's the correct syntax in a template, template literal for using your variable? We're going to do the money sign and then the squiggly brackets with the name inside of squiggly brackets. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to actually use the first answer to ask them the second answer, uh, or second question. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, different favorite restaurant, somebody. Olive Garden. Sure. One with the classics. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite thing to order from the Olive Garden? Fettuccine Alfredo. Also a classic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, now we're successfully pulling in two different variables and we've got those stored. Okay. Um, so we've got that. Um, we just did use a template literal. Um, I told you I was working ahead. Um, so let's just practice now writing a template literal that's actually gonna use um, both of those, just so we can do one more. And this is just printing a response. So this is where we just need console log because we're not trying to get um, an answer back. Um, and we're not trying to store this in a variable, it's just for printing. So template literal will be, um, I really uh, like <laughs> fave restaurant. Uh, hey, Carrie, I yeah. think that uh, Liz is trying to get back into the Zoom. Somebody oh. said in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, when I'm presenting, it's hard for me to see that stuff. Thank you so much. I'll try to put that over there. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll have to try the, and then we'll, you know, put our other variable in, um, fave food. Okay, so no matter what the user actually puts in, this will should print out um, with these templates in place to uh, display the answers. And then um, here's another little tip about these escape characters. Uh, you can use them anywhere you want, and so, in situations like this, you might want to space it out even more in, in your um, thing. So like we could actually put another escape character up here in front of this and it'll look nicer because it'll put some space between these questions and answers. Um, and then same thing here. Let's put it um, right up front and then also that was supposed to be an exclamation point. There we go. <laughs> Not a question. Um, and let's run it. Okay, somebody else give me a favorite restaurant. Let's do something random. We'll do uh, OC juice and smoothies. That's a good local one. <laughs> okay. I, was, I was hesitating because it's so long. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Has anybody ever been there? <laughs> ever oh. heard of that one? It's good. I have not heard of that. Oh, oh, okay. Let's try that again. It hung up on me and then uh, I pushed uh, enter again. <clears throat> okay, juice and smoothies, right? Yep. Okay, what's your favorite thing to order from there? Uh, the shrimp, shrimp spring rolls. All right. There you go. I really like OC juice and smoothies too. I'll have to try the shrimp spring rolls. Okay, so this is good. We are um, moving ahead with this. I'm gonna comment uh, this one out for now so that, I, although actually it doesn't matter. Let's keep it. Um, okay, 
So let's go to the next one and let's um, get some more input from the user and we'll do more things with it. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about a favorite actor and um, then think about what one of the movies or TVs might be that that uh, actor is in that is also a favorite for you. So somebody tell me how you wanna phrase this sentence because um, Part of you know uh, learning to do this is also learning how to present things well and to ask the user questions in a way that they really know which, what it is you're looking for. So, and these are very simple questions, guys. But you can also have a lot of fun here. You can you can say it however you want. I've been kind of boring. What is your favorite restaurant? So, by all means, give me something uh, exciting. What about um, who do you think the sexiest star is or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> who do you think the sexiest um, yeah, movie, movie star? Or TV star? We don't have to say sexiest. We could say anything, but along those lines. <laughs> I think that's perfectly valid. Okay. Okay. I was going to spice it up there a little bit. All right, and let's <laughs> put our uh, escape characters in there to keep things nice and the, uh, okay, yeah, okay, I'm good, okay. Um, and then for the second question, oh no, um, we have, we write it here, yes, okay. So let favorite, uh, let's call it show. I, I realize it might also be like, you know, a picture show as they would say a hundred years ago. Um, <laughs> all right, next question. I guess this one's pretty straightforward. Um, what's your favorite film or show they star in? Okay, y'all be thinking about answers because I'm about to ask, you know it. We're gonna test this thing out. Um, but let's, res let's um, go ahead and write this response first. So console.log, because all we wanna do is respond back. We're just going to, you know, prepare ahead, assuming all this stuff is going to work, and then we'll test it out. So, um, <clears throat> how about, uh, <laughs> I think that fave actor is pretty sexy, too. Um, I, I'll have to uh, check out and then we'll put in the other one, Fave Show. I don't think I've seen that one before. Okay, seriously guys, you can make it anything you want. Your mentors like it when you, you do funny things because it, it makes creating like all that much more enjoyable. <laughs> and I just realized I didn't put any escape characters in. We'll see how that turns out. Okay, um, we are back up on favorite restaurant. I'm gonna put one in. It closed down, I'm so sad because uh, of the pandemic, but Mango is a Peruvian restaurant in um, kind of the, the Wash Ave district, okay. My computer's hanging up again. Why are you doing this to me? Okay. Um, my favorite thing to order was by far Lomo Saltado. And so now we've got the sexiest movie or TV star. Somebody throw one at me. Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza. Okay. And favorite uh, film or show they're in? Parks and Rec. Say that again? Parks and Rec. Oh, yeah. Parks and Rec, okay. And you see what just happened. I failed to use my escape characters and now this is all like really, really messy and hard to read, right? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. They will be there for next time. We are going to be revisiting some of these questions. Um, front and back, give us some space, okay. Um, all right, so this is good. We, um, we had input for six things, but the first two we couldn't use because we didn't actually store them, right? So right now we're looking at having four things. We've got the restaurant, the food, 
the actor in the show. So um, that's all great, but those things are kind of like hanging out there. So let's create an array that holds the first um, four answers that are already stored. Um, and we'll just call this uh, favorites, how's that? Um, and if we wanna be even more descriptive, especially if, if some of these exercises, as you guys have been learning, you're working with both uh, string and array methods and sometimes you're switching them back and forth. And it, and it can be really confusing if you don't know which one is re actually represents an array, which one doesn't. So let's just do favorites array, just to be really clear. Um, all right, and we're gonna manually put these in since they already exist. Um, sometimes you will be working with data where you have some things in the array and then later you, you might add more to them. Um, so we got fave restaurant, fave food, fave food, fave actor, and fave uh, show, I think we said, right? Okay, uh, so now those are stored, we have an array. By the way, just for kicks, what length is that array? <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion about this on Slack. It's just one, right? Nope. The length uh, refers to the number of elements in the array. Oh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four, right. Um, I, a lot of the discussion that I've been seeing is around the difference between taking the length, which is really the same thing as just taking the count. You're just finding out how many things are in it. Um, but the difference with that and zero indexing, because if you actually look at the index, the location of these in the array, it's zero, one, two, and three, right? Okay. Um, so the, there are two different things. Um, and with, with length, it, it really, if you just substitute the word count, it makes a lot more sense. You don't have, have to worry about the fact that you, know, you start with one, because I mean, you do, but the computer, if you have an array of like a billion things, the computer is going to be a lot faster at adding those up than you are. Um, chance star. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so now we're going to do something where we actually no longer directly use these variables. We're only going to reference this array. So let's print um, what the user's favorite meal is and um, see if we can manage that using bracket notation. So I'm going to go ahead, since we're just printing, console.log, and I'll do a template literal and say, um, Okay, uh, I'm, gosh, I'm blanking on some of these guys. <laughs> this is dumb. Okay, that's a lot log. Uh, I heard that you really enjoy, and then we'll put this in. Okay, so here's where uh, the main thing is. Somebody tell me how I can refer back to the user's um, input the value by only using the array name. What am I gonna put here? You could put favorites array, and then next to that in brackets, you'd put one. Good. Um, exactly, because this is index, uh, index one right after index zero. Good job, okay. So that'll print out and let's do um, one more before we run the program again. Same thing, only this time we are going to add, holy smoly, okay. We are going to add um, a sentence that has both their restaurant and their movie. <clears throat> so we could say something like this. Um, I am um, headed out with my friends um, to see, and we'll, we'll put the movie there um, or show. <laughs> um, how about let's just say to watch, because then if it's a show, you could be going over somebody's house, right? I mean, nobody's going to the theaters right now anyway, which is kind of sad. Um, okay, uh, um, but first we are going to um, get dinner at, and then we'll put the restaurant. Okay, so um, this one, what do I put there, somebody? Uh, you would put favorite show and then bracket three. Well, favorite show is the specific, um, is actually the specific. Uh, oh, we're watching the actor. Do we do favorite arrays and then the bracket yeah. of favorite yeah, show? Yeah. Sorry, okay. and then, then three. Yeah, um, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of while, a while to get 
used to thinking in terms of accessing one variable name in order to get to another one. Um, but that's exactly how arrays work. So, oh, and I need to actually, you know, make it right. Okay. So then we're going to do the same thing here. Favorites array, and then what index will that be? And that would be zero. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And once again, I didn't put my escape characters in, so let me do that. Little things, guys. It's all in the details. All right. So I'll start at the top. Somebody give me a favorite restaurant. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> Circus. Oh, Blue Ocean Sushi. Okay, uh, say that one again. Uh, Blue Ocean Sushi. Blue Ocean. Mm -hmm. Or you can just do sushi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so does that mean that your favorite thing to eat there is sushi? Or, uh, or anything more sushi? Yeah. Uh, my favorite thing would be sushi, or you could put um, the fried California roll. Oh, okay, I got to start over. Yes, okay. Blue ocean sushi. All right, fried California roll is a good one. Okay, and um, sexiest movie or TV star, folks? Oh, I don't know his name, but he's the Superman guy. And he's in The Witcher too. Henry Cavill. Yeah, Henry Cavill. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say yes. Okay, so uh, which one do you want? Uh, the Witcher or Superman? Uh, the Witcher. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, so we got, yeah, we got that one. And then our other two, um, I heard that you really enjoyed Fried California Roll. Um, my 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 grammar is apparently terrible. Okay, I see. I just forgot my punctuation. Yeah. Okay. I'm headed out with my friends to watch The Witcher, but first we are going to get dinner at Blue Ocean Sushi. All right, great job. Okay, so a um, couple more questions because we want to get a little bit more input. And this is this is where um, we're going to practice a little bit more with working with arrays uh, because we actually. Um, need to not only ask the question, but then put it in the array, okay? Um, so let's let's see, we're going to do another input that question. And um, I should get this into Ask a user for, favorite, okay, uh, where is your favorite place to get away for a well-deserved <laughs> vacation? Um, let's do a escape character. Okay, and then um, same thing, input that question. Uh, what kind of activity uh, do you like to do? The dot got missed, Carrie, in between input question. Thank you. You're welcome. I can't believe I saw that. I'm yeah. doing better today already. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, yeah, it, you know, the more, <laughs> you this, the more that it, it's easy visually to just, you know, latch right on to stuff like that. Yeah. And, mm. and it also, it's always good to have a second pair of eyes because we all make typos. For sure. <laughs> okay. And then we'll just ask what they like to do there. Um, and uh, then we're going to print the array to the console. And when I say print the array, I mean literally just print the array. Um, and it'll show us the whole array right there in the console. And we're going to see that in just a second. So console.blog. And then we'll just do favorites array, just like that. And you'll see how that turns out. OK. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to leave it. All right. Uh, we're printing the whole array, right? Not, not just not a specific element. OK. and. Let's run it. Okay, so favorite restaurant. Uh, let's see if I can blow through this. Um, oh man, I have too many. That's my problem. Um, how about uh, there's okay, there's this like little Chinese place right next to me that is like some of the best Chinese in St. Louis. I live in U City. There's lots of good Chinese in U City. Um, Hans Walk. Okay, what's my favorite thing to order there? I used to go there all the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, long time ago. I don't remember what I ordered, unfortunately. Chicken with garlic sauce is one of my go-tos. 
Um, and sexiest movie or TV star? Hmm. If you think of one before me, shout it out. <laughs> I'd say Johnny Depp. Ooh, yes. Yes. But I'm trying to think of what the best movie he was in. Oh, there's just too many. I know. There are the Pirates of the Caribbean, he was really handsome in that. Yeah, I that <laughs> was coming to my mind too. <laughs> I think, oh man, it's it's um hanging up on me again. Dang it. Okay. I don't know what's it, it might be ruffle because I've got pretty good internet. Um okay, we're gonna go back and do this again. On swap. I was having problems earlier as well on on some stuff and I'd have to start over. Okay, um, Johnny Depp. I'm gonna have to go on this one with Chocolat because it's just a great little film. Um, okay, where? Okay, so now, so now we've printed some stuff and we're down here um, with the next question. What's your favorite place to get away? Okay, somebody give me a vacation destination. Las Vegas. <laughs> last place on earth I want to go but like I'm an introvert so I like things nice and quiet and <laughs> Las Vegas okay what's your favorite thing to do there uh sightsee okay. I'm bad at gambling so <laughs> can't say that. okay and um there we go and then you notice that right after that um we get this array popping out because all we did was a simple console log um, and I, I wanted to do this this way, and we're going to do it again in a second, and I'll show you um, a slight variation on this. But it, you know, gives you a nice clear array, and it shows you the actual values in that array um, that you just got from the user. So you can actually see what's being stored there um, just by running it to your, your console anytime you want, which is, can be really, really helpful. Um, if you, because it can be really abstract sometimes. You've got this array, array over here, you think it's holding all the values that you want, but you're not sure. Um, this is how you can tell. So we're going to do something though. Um, I'm going to actually concatenate it with a couple of these um, escape characters to, to get it some space. But, oh, man, I am struggling on-, on... I, have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So on that part where you took it says, uh, what's your favorite place to get away from? Mm -hmm. And then it says, it says, and put the answer in the array. Those two answers didn't go in the array. You're right. Thank you. See, this is why. Second set of eyes. <laughs> I asked you to do two things in that to do. So you're absolutely correct. Um, which is why we're not seeing them in the array. Wow. I'm a little tired, guys. Sorry. Long week. Not firing on all cylinders. So thank you for catching these things for me. No problem. Okay, so if we're going to do that, how do we do that? You guys um, remember the specific array method that we use to add something to it? Push? Yes, push. Okay, so um, with when you use arrays, uh, sorry, when you use methods on arrays, you start with the name of the array. Um, so favorites array, and then add.push, and then um, what do we put? Oh, what else did we forget to do? Add the answer, and by we I mean me. Um, we forgot to store it, right? Oh, yeah. It something, yeah. So we'll call this one fave um, vacay. How's that? And then this one we need to do the same thing. Oh, but okay. So we'll add it. So once you've stored it, then you can put it in there. Um, and then same thing here. Well, oh my goodness! Wow, y'all struggle on okay let fave uh what is it activity yeah so we'll store that there and then we'll do the same thing favorites array but, carrie are you gonna um would you be able to send us this link so we have because I, I mean i'm kind of taking notes and stuff but is that an option so that we don't have to do that while you're talking um, yeah, we actually have, I have two versions of this already in my collection okay. of exercises. Um, there's a starter code version okay. that kind of has half of these already written as examples and then opportunities for you to write some of them. And then there's also a solution one that has everything. Got it. I feel like I'm catching on everything so far, but 
That way I just won't be taking notes oh, yeah. while you're talking. Yeah, yeah. The, the way this thing goes, it's hard to like pay attention to what you're seeing on the screen and also take notes. So, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this, this will be there for you afterward. Absolutely, okay. Cool, thank um, you. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, so, so now we've got everything we were supposed to have. Thanks guys. And uh, I'm also adding this in. So now I'm concatenating um, a variable that um, with some string pieces and it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out because it may not look like this. Let's let's run this. All right, favorite restaurant. Let's. Uh, I'm going to go with CJ Muggs, also a favorite. And one of the favorite things they got from them is their um, cheeseburger. Honestly, I'm going to be real. They just have a really really good cheeseburger. Um, sexiest movie or TV star? Uh, oh boy, you know. He knows it. He he knows it about himself, and and that could be a little bit of a turn off. But Idris Elba is really fine. <laughs> so I gonna... second this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think oh, it's hanging up on me again. Don't do this. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna keep typing. There we go. Luther, I think it's probably my favorite thing. He's in. Okay, favorite place for a uh, well-deserved vacation. You guys, give me something else. New Orleans. New Orleans, okay. And then uh, what kind of activity do you do in New Orleans? Ghost tour. <laughs> Say that again? I said ghost tour, I'm a ghost nerd. Tour. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay. All right, um, so yeah, look at this. We've got all six of our um, pieces of data now. They're stored in here, but you notice how it doesn't show you. Oh, it it, it uh, reset it. You notice how it doesn't have the brackets and it doesn't have um, you know the nice green text and all that to really pop out at you. That is because once a variable has been concatenated or or otherwise included with a string, it's going to display it as a string instead. So it basically took everything inside of it and kind of forced it into a comma separated string. So these things are kind of useful to know because sometimes you might try to do something with it and it doesn't come out the way you planned. Um, and that's this is a good example of that. Okay, so um, we just did that. So now let's go. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do one more practice with creating a sentence that um, incorporates several of, several of our variables, but then also, um uses bracket notation and references the array only so console.log we'll do a template literal and say uh okay um i hope next time you are visiting and then we'll put in our spot so um again we reference the array first and then we put um Dang it. Okay, and then we put, <laughs> there we go. Uh, then we put uh, the, the index. So um, let's see, our va vacation spot is the second to last one. So that's gonna be not index five, but index four, right? Um, since we're zero indexed. Um, you have an opportunity to, um, so we said meal, right? Yeah, eat some, and then we'll go get the meal. <laughs> and that's going to be the second one. So that's at index one. And then um, after you have a, a nice day out on a, and then we'll go for, our last one. So this is going to be index five, the very last index. Just for fun, um, let's let's actually take this a step further. Right here, if I did not know what the last index was, I only knew that the one I wanted was the very last thing, um, but I didn't know how many were in the array. How would I figure that out? How can I calculate it? Can we put like link favorites? Array dot length, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Favorite 
um, favorites array dot length, and we know the length is six. So then, what do we have to do to get to the last index? Um, I don't know. Well, else. if it's zero index, it means that the last index is not six. It's what? Five or yeah, yeah, five. So all we have to do is subtract one. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and you'll you'll get kind of used to working with that too. It's not uncommon sometimes to need to refer to the last one. If you don't know the length, there could have been, you know, 16 things in here and all you knew is you needed the last one. So you would just say, you know, array dot length minus one to get to that very last um, one. So that's a little bonus knowledge for you there. Okay. Um, and yeah, we'll get to that next part next because um, that's a whole new thing. Okay, so let's let's run this. Um, all right, favorite restaurant. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with tropical smoothie. <laughs> Another great smoothie place. My favorite thing to get is the uh, Jamaican jerk. It's like a yeah jerk chicken wrap or something like that. It's really good. Um, sexiest movie or TV star? Anyone? Ryan Gosling. Hey, girl. Okay. <laughs> and t uh, TV show or movie? Crazy Stupid Love. I haven't seen that one. I should remedy that. Okay. Uh, favorite place to get away for vacation? Virgin Islands. Okay. What do you want to do there? Uh, snorkel. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, out on a snorkeling. That didn't really work out. <laughs> it's okay. Um, sometimes that happens. Uh, okay. And yeah, so we got um, our whole sentence there into place with um, just referencing the array. And here we took it a step further and actually looked up the index, calculated the index instead of just specifying it, um, which is more common. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's say we, we know we need to get to the, um, get to these, but the only way we have to reference them are the keywords that represent them. And this is gonna sound a little bit contrived and it is, but this is an important way of talking about how arrays can relate to one another for this assignment, um, particularly for, for part two. So um, we're gonna have a new array that we're gonna create and um, it's gonna represent all the keywords that relate to the, the variables that we're storing. So <clears throat> let's say uh, let keywords array, <laughs> equals, man, typing skills are bombing today. It's awful, okay. And let's, let's just uh, go straight up. So we know that um, the first one is the restaurant, right? And then the second one is the meal. All right, let's go with food. I think that was um, more, okay. And then um, the third one is uh, actor. Second one or fourth one is uh, show. And then we've got um, destination and activity. Will those work, you think? Pretty clear? Okay. So we now have two arrays and they have um, elements, they have the same number of elements and the number and the elements that are in them relate to one another, right? The things that are in, um, yeah, let's, let's print them both. I think I've got that right here. So uh, let's print favorites array. And the new array, keywords array. And let's just look at them side by side. Um, we have to do the whole thing. That's the thing about user input. Okay. Oh boy. Um, mm -hmm. I like to get things from um, Noodles and Company. Uh, Japanese pan noodles is a favorite. 
Um, sexiest movie or TV star? Is it, this isn't hard, my brain just isn't working. How about Michael B. Jordan? Yes. Yes, excellent choice. Um, all right, do I, do I have, to, I mean, I have ideas about, what, what, what's your favorite film? <laughs> Uh, Black Panther. Yeah. Yep, he was fantastic in Black Panther. Okay. All right, favorite getaway. Anyone? Tahiti. Say that again? Tahiti. <laughs> Tahiti, all right. Um, Put on all the beaches. <laughs> and uh, what, what do you like to do there? Uh, go to the beach. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so maybe, okay. So, gosh, it's, um, getting the nonsense. All right. Swimming, maybe. Okay. That might be easier. Yeah. So yeah, I think if I, and it, there we go. It caught up with Yeah. Me. Okay. And now we have both of our arrays side by side and you can see, and you know, I'm not entirely sure why sometimes, um, it chooses to order things like this, like line them up all neat and then and when it doesn't, it's very interesting, but um, you can see that it chooses to do things differently sometimes, but they're all in the same order. Noodles and Company is the restaurant, Japanese can noodles is the food, right? You can kind of see how they all correlate. That's a, an extremely useful thing sometimes and it's, it's kind of really critical for the way that you guys handle um, this first assignment. So we're going to, um, print a, a version of the same sentence we had before. So let me just actually grab this. And we're gonna change the way that referring to things. Um, instead of index four and index one and length minus one, um, we're going to use this um, special method called index of to find um, what the index is based on uh, the keyword. So let's think about this for a second. The keyword is in the other array, right? So actually what we're, but, but we know that the arrays, the index um, indexes match up. So if we go and we look for the keyboard in the uh, keyword in the keywords array, we know it's the same index that we want for the favorites array, right? That's, that's actually the benefit of this. So we're going to actually start with the keywords array because we need to go find out what that index is. And we'll use index of, and then we're going to just put in what that text is. So I'm gonna say, in this case, um, I want the destination. And um, I don't need a semicolon there. Um, and then same thing here, we'll do a keywords array, index of, and then here, we'll put food. And then again, keywords array, index of, and um, it, th this particular uh, thing right here, you may or may not end up using for the way that you solve uh, the assignment because it can be done multiple ways. Um, but I think it's a good thing to cover. Uh, so we're gonna we're just gonna cover it, and then, and then this is the activity. Okay. Um, so as long as we know what the what the activities are, we will successfully. I'm sorry, what the keywords are. We should be able to use this. All right, let's go. Um, favorite restaurant. Hmm. I like. Uh, I'm, ha I'm having trouble remembering what the name of this. That's terrible. I order from there all the time. Let's let's go with Sugar Fire. How's that? Um, Sugar Fire's is a steakhouse, barbecue, whatever. Okay. Um, uh, pr probably their pulled pork. Although you know the menu changes every day. Um, movie or TV star. Let's go with George Clooney, kind of classic, you know, old Hollywood farm um, and anything oceans basically. So let's just start with Ocean, Oceans 11. Okay, favorite place to get away. 
I had a really nice um, trip to Alaska once. And I'd have to say uh, whale watching. Sure. Okay. Um, I hope next time you're visiting Alaska, you have an opportunity to eat some pulled pork after you have a nice day on our whale watching tour. So it worked. We got the same, you know, response, um, the same or the same printout here, the uh, output um, that we did the first time. But this time we used another array with, with these keywords in order to, man, here, I realize that my punctuation is not present. Um, in order to achieve, you know, what we what we needed there. So um, yeah, so a note here, when you get to part three, eventually, you're gonna be using loops to go through and ask your questions. Um, so you won't have to like do so much, you know, kind of hard coding. Um, and the, once you kind of learn more about that, it'll make more sense to you. But right now we're just really, you know, working on the fundamentals. Okay, so the last thing you wanna do is just a little bit of conditionals, um, which you guys have already done some of for uh, part one, which you've worked on, but we're gonna cover it here anyway, um, just to make sure it's, it's, it's part of this. So we're gonna use template literals and we're also gonna add in um, making things case insensitive because by the time you get to the end of this assignment, you have to have accounted for that that your user may enter think, uh, something in uppercase or with you know, a combination of uppercase and lowercase. And they, that may not be how your data is stored. Um, you know, a common example I think is uh, one of the questions on assignment one is about Sally Ride, right? And so it's like, you, know, you, you can put in, in Sally Ride's name with the S and the R capitalized, but your user may just put it in all lowercase. And if you don't actually account for the case sensitivity, um, then it's going to say that it's wrong when in fact it is actually right in terms of you know it actually being the right answer okay so um let's do this so somebody tell me how to write a conditional so if uh -huh. else statements yep so if and then you need a parenthesis okay in this case, we're checking to see if the user chose pizza as their favorite food. So what do we need to reference? So if favorite food equals pizza. Let's do it from the array though. Oh, okay. So the array was food. Uh, fav favorites array. Favorites array, okay. I was thinking of the um, the keyword, but we can't do that. Okay, favorites yeah. are, okay. I shouldn't have said anything because now I'm confused. So favorites are a, and then I don't remember which index that was. Uh, it's index one, you can kind of see it right over here. Um, oh, okay, Yeah. gotcha, okay. But we also could do it the other way where we actually go to the keywords array um, and look it up, right? And find find it if we can't remember which one it is, and then that's where you know we can just put in. Food. Oh, okay, yeah, that's where I was getting confused. Yeah, no, it's okay. We're we're kind of combining a lot of different things all into one one thing now. And then so, the question: Can I ask really quick? So, since I guess since keywords array links to favorites array, they you can't use keywords array by itself. It has to be used with favorites array. Well. Um, I don't know if that's a, a weird question or not. I just yeah, I'm I, I'm not I'm actually sure what it is you're asking, but I I can just go ahead and say that the only purpose of the keywords array Whoa. is to get you a path to um to finding what the index is that you need to actually look in the favorites array and get the user's input. Okay, I I just was inclined without realizing that just to go straight into the keywords array thinking I'm just trying to get to food, you know, get to the point that it's, yeah. we're looking for the food equals pizza kind of thing. Yeah, because okay. we know this, yeah, okay. part, this part right here that I've got highlighted, that's okay. gonna return one. Because okay. It's gonna go and look in the keywords array, it's gonna find food at index one. So now we have the one that we're looking for in the bracket. Yeah, yeah. 
to look in the favorites array and find the answer at index one. And so then that's where it takes us to the actual answer. So that wouldn't have taken me to the answer just putting in keywords array. Okay. Yeah. Got um, it. it. My next, oh, sorry. My next question is, cause you said that they line up like that. So if we're doing a key, a keywords array, it has to match up with the original array then. So say like I have, um, index like six different items in my favorites array but then I have eight items in my keywords array it wouldn't you can't do that because it would come back like undefined or invalid yeah um possibly mm -hmm. okay. Dep depending on which direction the the discrepancy was in mm -hmm. okay yeah this this type of approach only really works when you know <clears throat> excuse me you know you have things set up in a very parallel way and um, next weekend, the exercise we're going to do um, is going to treat it the same way. It's going to work with a bunch of things in parallel. <clears throat> so you'll have more practice with this. Okay, so, but so your logic was, uh, when you started out, was good. So we're, you're, you're correct that we're going to set this equal to just um, the string pizza. Okay. Um, so then uh, after the parentheses, what comes next? For syntax. Uh, curly bracket. Yep. And, and then, so we, we just want to print um, some sort of uh, uh, council.log. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, response. Yeah. What do you want to say back? Um, I don't know, it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and let's do the template literal. So thanks. Uh, um, how about this? Um, so we now know that we can use, uh, well, and I really, if I was gonna do it, I would um, probably need the whole thing if I'm gonna do this because I didn't store it in a separate variable. And that would actually be a, another approach would be to store this. Um, first and then use the variable twice. And, and I can show you that in a minute if you want. Um, all right, so let me make sure I've got everything matched up right. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, close that out. Okay. Is exactly what I had in mind and I accidentally closed my template a little too quickly. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, and then if it's not true, if they have not put in pizza, um, we could say something different um, and say, uh, could we <laughs> maybe do um, Mediterranean food in there? Uh, make sure I spell it right here. I have a hankering for baklava. <laughs> Everyone has a hankering for baklava. Let's be real. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's do this again. Also, I, I have been failing to put in the template, uh, excuse me, the uh, escape characters, which will make things a little easier to read. Okay. Let's do um, the same idea. And this time, when we do it, we will store things in a variable before we write it out. So. Um, uh, let, so we're looking at a vacation spot. So user vacay spot, how's that? And we're gonna go ahead and say that it's the favorites array um, at keywords array dot index of, and then destination, because that's the keyword that we have for that. Um, the A will have to be capitalized or it's going to come back bad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if we store that, it should um, be, now we can just use this every single time. And that is so much nicer, is it not? So if we want to also use it here, now we don't have to do it twice. All right. And in this case, we're checking for Hawaii. So we'll do that. 
Um, the user vacation spot has a parentheses and a bracket around it, Carrie. Thank you. Um, you're right. This is what happens when you cut and paste, guys. It's easy to make those kinds of mistakes. Sometimes it's worth it just to type it out. And honestly, when you guys are in the beginning of learning this, it's really good practice just to type it out because it takes a while to get in the flow of typing code with all the syntax you're trying to get used to. You're using you know, keys on the keyboard that you never used before, <laughs> um, like backticks, for example. Uh, okay, so let's and let's just you know, switch this up. So now we're gonna say, um, wow. It's still got a parentheses right at the beginning of user vacay spot to the left of Hawaii. No, it's supposed to. You know what, oh, never mind. I, yeah. that was my... No, that's cool. Sorry. Yeah, no, you guys are getting used to this and it's all right. But yeah, that's the conditional um, set of parentheses. I always don't want to put parentheses around conditionals. That confuses me every time. So <laughs> I got to get that out of my head. <laughs> Yeah, different languages do it differently, but JavaScript absolutely requires it. So um, yeah, okay. And so I'm gonna change this and just say is somewhere I've always wanted to go. And then here, maybe instead we could say, um, fun, how was your trip to, and then we'll just use this again. Um, user vacay spot and um, there we've encoded it again into our template literal so that it'll spit out the specific value. So this is, you know, this is really, really useful. This is one of the reasons in um, part one of this assignment, they had you create these variables first um, so that you could use them over and over again in other places later. Um, and absolutely is worth it because up here we had to you know, use this whole thing twice, right? And that's not really ideal. Okay, last thing we said that we were gonna deal with um, making sure that we don't have case sensitivity problems. So how do we do that? Um, what what uh, method can we use, what string method? So two uppercase or two lowercase? Yeah. And in the case of, of um, this one, uh, it's all we, we know that our hard coded uh, thing that we're checking for is already um, lowercase, right? But um, so the only thing we really have to do is do it on this side, right? Because we only need to change their response and then check it against something we already know is lowercase. However, much like we did here. Let's do one more variable here and say, what did I just do? <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, let's um, assume, how, how, how's that? Assumed uh, destination equals, and we'll say um, Hawaii. Okay. And yeah. So we're going to just type it in like it's normal with a, with, a, with a capital H. And so anything could be coming back. And sometimes, you know, maybe like you're, if, with your, um, if you have all five questions, some of them might be capitalized, some of them might not. So in a case like that, if you're going to go and you're going to use the same bit of code to check for like all of them, you want to have something that's going to work for everything. So we can't assume that it's going to be, you know, capitalized. Um, and we definitely can't assume that the user is going to respond with it in the same format. So in a situation like this, we're gonna replace this and say assumed destination. And we're comparing these two different, again, you know, their, their response against what we assumed. Um, and in that case, what we have to do is either make them both uppercase or both lowercase. And so this time let's do uh, two uppercase because it really doesn't matter. Um, the only reason it might matter is if you're saving it and storing it that way and you want it to pre present it a different way. But here we're temporarily doing it um, just long enough to make this comparison for the conditional. Does that make sense? We're not actually changing the values of these by using these. We're just, we're just 
converting them temporarily so we can change something. Okay. Is everybody tracking? You guys good? More or less? <laughs> All right. Let's print it. Let's or let's run this and find out how many mistakes I made. Oh, so far it's running. That's good. That's a good sign. Um, okay, favorite restaurant. Uh, we had so many of these. How about um and say emos because you're gonna have pizza. Oh no, but that's like plastic on cardboard, y'all. Oh no. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> I understand. Emos is amazing. Okay, okay. I don't want to, I won't just sit for people who grew up here. I did not grow up here, but um, yeah. Okay, uh, what's your favorite thing to order from Emos? Would that be the pizza itself? <laughs> pizza. Do we have to say pizza because we did the conditional or do you want a pizza? What? That is a great idea. Let's do it because that way we can test if our, if our um, thing comes back. Uh, and let's let's do it in all caps because we're super psyched about the emos pizza apparently <laughs> okay um movie star somebody give me something leonardo dicaprio leo yeah okay uh which film or show film really I can't even think right now. Uh, catch me if you can. Thank you. Yes, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I was drawing a blank for some reason on that. That's a great film. He was so good on that. Um, okay, vacation spot, somebody. San Diego. All right, what do you like to do in San Diego? Um, I love their beaches. Okay, so um, this is the beach. How's that? Okay. Um, all right, so we got our, our uh, values. We can see uh, all the users input. We've got our keywords that we used, and now we've got these printouts. So um, looking at these uh, conditionals, we can see that it evaluated um, if their response was equal to pizza, and it converted it to lowercase first, so it came out true, and we got this response um, that was what we were expecting. That it actually, you know, is confirming that it, it pizza, and that only worked because of this. Otherwise, that capital, you know, all caps pizza would have returned false, and we would have ended up with this. Um, so uh, let's see. Down here, we got fun. How was your trip to San Diego? Because it was not Hawaii, right? Um, and in this case, we made sure to test one against the other with the same method um, so that we didn't have to worry about, you know, case uh, sensitivity there either. Okay. All right. So we just did a lot, y'all. And, and I know it, it probably felt a little bit tedious having to go through this every single time. But let me uh, just warn you, that is coding because testing your stuff, you're gonna be running it over and over and over again. And when you're doing things like this that require input, whether it's a simple program like this that runs in a console, or whether it's a web page that has a form that you've created with a bunch of fields that you have to fill out, um, you're going to just have to, you know, kind of keep working through it and keep testing and you're adding things and making sure nothing breaks. Um, but uh, so it's, it's kind of par for the course. This is all, you know, really good practice. And like I said, um, so, over in my document um, that uh, I have share, shared multiple times, I think, and I can um, put the link in the chat now, actually. Let me grab this. Um, I'll drop this in in case you haven't ever seen this before, but this is like, I've, I've mentored for Coder Girl for this unit before, and I created a ton of practice exercises, and I'm adding new things all the time. And you've got everything by topic, um, and then you kind of come down and uh, after that, there's these prep exercises for the graded assignments. And this is where everything really comes together. You've got a whole bunch of different topics all at once, right? Um, you're building uh, things. So this is where we are today. I've got starter code, no guest solution. I do want to warn you that I need to update these because that conditional stuff that we just went over at the very end, I haven't added it in yet. So as soon as we get done, I'll add it. It'll be there and you'll be in good shape. Um, and then, of course, uh, next Saturday, we're going to do um, a, a live session on this one, and I'll walk you guys through it. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to write something for this one. Uh, I, need, I need to 
catch up. So I've got, I've got for everything else, but not that one. And then I was having so much fun when um, I was helping teach the Dom, uh, which you guys will get to a little bit later, that I created some side projects. And if you haven't demoed those, you might want to check those out. Um, why don't we look at them now? Okay, so this is a little like coloring thing where you can um, choose your colors and make fun designs. And you can fill these things out um, kind of however you want to. I mean, I'm totally like just throwing stuff around, but um, yeah, and it can change from dark mode to light mode. Um, and you can also like take things out um, if you want to, you can kind of see how I, I got rid of some of them. Um, and, you can, and you can change your color themes as you're going along. Um, so there's a lot of interactive stuff. So you guys will get to this much, much later, but th my point is this is the kind of stuff you guys are, are being trained for. You're gonna you know, have the skills to be able to come up with really interesting things. So um, yeah, so I wanted to plug that just to make sure that uh, you know you can come here anytime and get a little bit of extra practice with uh, a lot of these concepts because you're moving through it very quickly and the, um, the launch code curriculum has the prep exercises for you in the studios, but more practice is always better, right? Um, to really nail down some of these concepts. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop recording and we'll, uh, and then we'll close out. Does anybody have any other questions for me though before I do that? So this will be, this session will be uploaded on there in the link. Yes, I will put a, a YouTube um, link in that um, spot uh, right there. Yep, it's gonna cool. have, have to process it a little bit and then um, I'll have it up later today. So will you be doing these always on Saturdays or do you do these at different days sometimes? Or I know you're getting ready to go back to work, you said, so. Yeah, it's pretty much always gonna be on weekends. I'm also flexible okay. on, on Sundays. The reason that I like to do it on Saturdays is because a lot of people use Sundays as days to code. And if you've had the opportunity to participate in this the day before, you still have one more day left in your weekend to work on. Your right, okay. Yeah, that's the primary thinking behind that. 